What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. So the other day, Charlemagne the God, radio personality, TV personality, he posted on his Instagram page that The Breakfast Club, meaning him, Angela Yee, and DJ Envy, were recently named as the 2020 inductees of the Radio Hall of Fame, right? And when I saw that, all I could do was clap for those individuals, man. All I could do was salute them because I remember when The Breakfast Club really first started, when they were in their infant stages. So to see in a span of 10 years where they come to, where they've come to, it is huge. It is like, like their impact is monumental and you cannot ignore it. Like if you do not see the impact that these radio personalities and their radio show, The Breakfast Club, had on hip hop culture and pop culture, you are walking around with a blindfold on. Seriously, like you cannot ignore the commentary that they brought to the forefront on a hip hop radio show. Like on a hip hop radio show, they talked about conversations uh, about race relations in America. They talked about sex trafficking on the show, had sex trafficking survivors come on the show. Uh, Charlemagne has been a, a huge mental health advocate over the years. Uh, he's been talking about it so often. He's talking about therapy to many different individuals. You've had uh, po politicians come onto the Breakfast Club, like for real. Politics have been like like that discussion on a hip hop based radio show is like like that is really something that's tremendous because think about it y'all presidential candidates come onto the Breakfast Club to give their pitch to Black America right to talk to youth in America talk to the Black youth to talk to Black people in general they come onto the Breakfast Club because they know how much of an influence the Breakfast Club has on culture not even just not even just uh, hip hop culture pop culture in general. They come on these shows and try to give their pitch. Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, whether you like them or not or whether you're for them or against them. They have come on this show because they know the impact that this show has. And that speaks volumes about the job that they've been doing over these years, man. Like, I remember, like, for real, like, like, that, like, when they, when they had Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden come on there, I'm thinking about, like, all the times, all, like, people, CNN and all these uh, Fox News have pulled clips from their radio show to discuss, that is incredible to see. Their reach and influence in the political stratosphere is like, I'm like, damn, look at look at how far they've came. And I remember I first started watching The Breakfast Club in about, I think, the end of 2011 or beginning of 2012. It was during my freshman year in college at Mississippi Valley State University, right? And I remember watching these people. And I, I remember Yee because she had the Shade 4 or 5 show. She did the uh, the morning after with Angela Yee. And then um, she did, uh, she would have the lip service little thing on there as well. It would be like in like a, um, a, a thermal type view, like, like that, uh, like the thermal cam, or not thermal cam, it would be like a, um, what cam I'm talking about? It's like one of them night vision cameras they, that they had on Angela Yee's show. And then I remember hearing Envy's name a little bit, but I ain't really, really know Envy for real, for real. I had never even known who Charlemagne was. I heard his name, but I really didn't. I never even knew what he looked like before before watching The Breakfast Club. And I would watch their show, and I think, damn, that is really the way that you conduct an interview. The way that they get people comfortable enough to reveal certain information, information that the public wants to hear, that is a master of your craft. To be able to get people to sit down and talk to you and reveal certain things, like, like people come to The Breakfast Club, and they start, they, they create moments on The Breakfast Club. And The Breakfast Club has propelled individuals' careers. Think about it. A lot of interviews that people have done have propelled their careers like to the next level. So when you like, man, I really want to check out this individual and see what type of person, you know, I, want, I really want to see what's to them. What more do they have to offer, right? My boy Melvin used to always tell me, a Breakfast Club interview can make or break you a lot of times, especially with him. Because if he, if he feels like you're a really dope person, you really got a dope story, and you're a really cool individual that's really, like, unique and a really, like, down-to-earth person, he gonna rock with you. When you come to the Breakfast Club and you come on there real arrogant and ignorant, he like, I'm off of you, right? And I think a lot of people feel like that. They can be turned off or turned on to a person's, a person's personality based on a Breakfast Club interview because they're going to get the most out of their interviews for real. I love that they're not generic. They don't come on there just, hey, who's on your album? Who's featured on your album? Who's producing tracks on the album? The same boring radio format that we've been hearing a lot of times. And I'm not going to disrespect the other OGs who are inducted into the Hall of Fame. Sway, we can't forget about um, um, Angie Martinez and uh, a host of others. I'm kind of like, I got to go look back, look back at that list. But I remember Sway and Angie Martinez, right? But the Breakfast Club, man, like, and just like swaying them, like, they get people comfortable to say 
anything, but really I think the Breakfast Club do it to another level. No disrespect to the other OGs, but they come with the hard questions, and I think Charlemagne pushes that for real, right? Then you get, like, their personalities mix so well. This is why I'm really, I hope that they don't break up, you know what I mean? I hope that they can last. I hope Charlemagne renews his, they, Charlemagne's contract is renewed and they stay on the radio, because their chemistry, you cannot produce that with another a whole nother group, right? Envy is the guy, you know, he played a neutral thing. Uh, well, Angela Yee is often neutral. She provides the gossip, but she tries to tone things down when things get out of hand. Charlemagne is what he called his, he called his uh, the prince of pissing people off, the architect of aggravation. He's going to take the interview to the next level, and he's going to go and ask things that you may not like. You may get pissed off at when he asks little Kim, like, like for real. And this is, and people would say this is very disrespectful. When he asked her, why did she do all this surgery to her? Why she do that to her face and all that, right? And she was just blown away that he asked this question. But to him, it's like, I'm asking what the public wants to know. We want to, we really want to know you're a beautiful girl. Why did you do that? And it was like, people like, damn, that's rude. But it's some people like, man, like, it takes a lot of balls to ask, to ask those type of questions. And he's been around for so long, he has so much, so many relationships with all these different artists based in New York City. His ties with Fab and DJ Clue and so many other artists in New York is profound because he really made his bones being with Clue. And I didn't even know like how deep Envy's catalog and his career ran. But to see them individuals like all in the mix like that, like all of them, and, and Envy plays a role where he can be on what Charlemagne is on. He can play devil's advocate with you. He can propose a whole different argument than what you're doing. You know what I mean? Or he can be all for what you're saying. And, you know, like, I remember when him and Killer Mike had the back and forth about public school versus private school, right? And it made for an interesting topic on my uh, YouTube show, right? My YouTube platform, right? Um, I remember all of this, all the historic, like, the, the, the not historic, but all the, the crazy viral moments that the Breakfast Club has produced. Starting off with Ray J. And I remember when they were saying that they were almost, they didn't know if they were going to be out of there or not. They thought they was going to get canceled and they thought it was going to get shut down. He said, they always say, Ray J saved them. He indoor pool, outdoor pool. You want to mess with the money team? We got five Rolls Royces. What did he say? Five Rolls Royces outside of something. He talking crazy. Talking about the booty goons going to come get you talking wild. But that just sparked so many other viral moments. The Birdman moment, right? Charlemagne's incident with Beanie Siegel. Beanie Siegel gets started listing all his, uh, he started listing his criminal history like he going down his damn resume. I mean, I, I know this fool is not up here, and I love Beans to death. That's death. That's one of my favorite rappers, right? Like, growing up, I really love Beans. But to him naming his criminal history going back and forth with Charlemagne, I was just laughing at Beans. And when Beans was like, I can leave right now, Charlemagne was like, okay, go ahead. And Beans sat back down. I said, oh, damn, Beans. Broad Street Bully, you out here looking crazy because you need this Breakfast, Breakfast Club interview because he knows how powerful that interview and that that uh, platform is in hip-hop. At that point, Beans hadn't been around for a long time. He had like a lung removed. He was like far removed from hip-hop for real, so from the hip-hop scene. So I remember Charlamagne's moment with Fred Rose Starr. I remember um, K. Michelle getting pissed off at Angela Yee. Getting ready to snap. I remember Dame Dash and Envy going back and forth about being a boss and what you're going to have for your kids if you're a worker, which I didn't really like because even though Dame was preaching being a boss, he was shitting on the working class individuals. And they're like, you got to start somewhere. Dame leave, was leaving out the part that he started off with illegal drug money to get where he needed to be. And everybody ain't w willing to risk their freedom and risk going to jail and taking away from their children to be able to put it, be put into be, uh, excuse me, to be able to be put into a position as a boss. But it was just so many different unique conversations that came about from that show. I remember when Stevie J and them went up there and this man Charlemagne asked, um, he crazy. When he, oh, well, when Charlemagne made, Lil, when Lil Mama was crying up there when he, when Charlemagne and her were going back and forth. I remember when, um, um, when, uh, Stevie J and Jocelyn went up there. And Jocelyn, Steve, and Charlamagne was basically alluding to Jocelyn being a man, right? And um, she was like, uh, what did she say? She's like, I got a vagina. He's like, let me see it, right? I'm like, oh, this man crazy. Then I remember when um, she was like, I'll blow this joint up. I ain't none of Lala, none of them other fake girls you hang with or whatever. He's like, now why? She said, he's like, why you got to call Lala that? And he was like, I'm just saying, I'll blow this mug up. This was right after the Boston bombings happened, right? And he was like, why would you say that after the Boston bomb has happened? Why are you going to say you're going to blow up the radio show? She's like, oops, I shouldn't have said that. And he was like, yes, you know better than that. 
young man. And I'm like, oh my God, fam called a young man up here. I'm like, this man is crazy. But just all the different moments that that show has produced, whether you feel like, you know, Charlamagne is the bad guy or not, or, you know, just all the things that a soldier boy, soldier boy going up there acting a damn fool and like, you know, <laughs> wilding out up in there. Like I can just name so many moments. That I remember just from that radio show sparking, man. And um, it's been something that I was watching every day. And, and in college, I would sit in front of my, my laptop and like I'm like, get my laptop up right now. I would sit in front of my laptop and watch The Breakfast Club all the time, every time. And I had my boy, I turned my boy Melvin on to the show. Like he like, bro, you you don't want to put me on to watching The Breakfast Club, right? And um, yeah, man, it's just been a, a, a great ride for those individuals, man. I'm extremely proud of what they've made of their careers. Charlemagne has spread it off into giving commentary into the political, uh, what's the, the Colbert show? he have been on there. Uh, all these different talk shows, like Envy and all, Envy and Ye have been on all these political shows. Uh, Charlemagne has written books. Angela Ye uh, did, just did the interview with, um, they dropped the bombshell on America, the August Alcina interview. She got her own lip service joint. Envy has been ultimate businessman. I mean, making money did. He was with FN Vodka with 50. And he's into the uh, real estate game. And every day out here getting caked up, man. It's just beautiful to see these individuals shine. And com especially coming from a point where they didn't know if they were going to last on the radio. You know, and um, the back and forth they didn't have with people at High 97. And uh, it's it just been crazy to see, man. It's been a crazy ride. But I just will never forget, like, I've seen some profound stories on there. People that were ultimate entrepreneurs that started from nothing and made their way to something. And I'm like, to hear these stories have been so inspiring. But that's what, it, again, credit to the Breakfast Club. They get individuals to come on and tell the origins of their story. No matter if it's a historic producer like Pharrell, if it's a historic rapper like Jay-Z. Jay-Z came on the Breakfast Club. Jay don't be coming on a lot of people's show. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um... They got so many other artists and, 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 and Timbaland and all these people to come on here and talk about how they began and how their story led to where it is now. And it was just like, man, the Breakfast Club make you feel like you talking to your cousins, you know what I mean, at Thanksgiving, or you talking to your family or something at the little, at the cookout. Like you kill you chick you you kicking back and chilling with your cousins having a conversation to where they can they can discuss all different type of stuff, right? All the stuff that's going on with Trey Songs right now. Kiki Palmer. They got Kiki Palmer to discuss what happened with her and Trey Songs and all of that on their show. And then it's a clip that's spreading around the world right now. So the Breakfast Club reach and their uh, impact has been like, you can't dismiss it, man. Like, people come on there like, man, I've been waiting to get on here. Like, people have, like, you come on, an uh, uh, artist comes on there that people may not know. And I remember when Dave East first came on the Breakfast Club. I didn't even know who East was. I went to go check out his music instantly because he seemed like a real thorough dude. Seemed like a dude, you know, he used to be hooping. He's out here like, man, I'm trying to do something with my life. I'm trying to stay away from the street stuff. So I went to the rapping. And uh, I'm like, I want to go check him out. I first heard who Joyner Lucas was, even though I feel like he's become a, he's become a gimmick rapper for recently. Uh, but he's a dope. He can rap for sure. I saw him spit on there like, damn, I got to go check him out. Me being from the shot, I knew who Tink was. Tink, for all that was signed, that was signed with Timbaland at one point. Tink from KMS City, I knew because I'm from the crib. But when she went up there, rapped and spit, like people were like, "Oh my God, who is this?" They were like, "Really to check her out and all that," you know. So, Breakfast Club interviews do a lot for people, but these individuals, you got to give your credit and tip your hat to them, you know, because like. It's just the things that they've done, that like the the imprint on the culture. Is they got a stronghold on a stronghold on the culture. I've seen people come up there and spit like, oh my God, it's like this dope. Some people be like, ah, it's all right. You know, um, you heard like so many crazy stories from people come up there. People up there telling, okay, this what happened, this happened, that happened. I mean, Dennis Rodman coming up there telling his background. And like, like, it's just, it's just so many crazy, like dope moments that have happened at the Breakfast Club. And you like, man, this is our, this show is one of a kind. And um, like Whenever they, if they, I hope they ride until the wheels fall off. I hope you know Charlemagne and Ye can get back on one accord and and they can renew Charlemagne's uh, contract. And I hope it stays on. But in the long run, whenever the show ends, people are, are going to have to remember the Breakfast Club and what they did in a ten, in a decade. All the different content they produced outside of just hip hop too, like. 
It's been crazy, man. Shout out to the Breakfast Club. Congratulations on being uh, named as a 20, 2020 inductee. Excuse me, inductees of the Radio Hall of Fame. Machiavelli Mills TV. I'm out. Peace.